VLBCL or diffuse large B cell lymphoma is a kind of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. It is a cancer of the immune system, specifically the lymphocytes, which are oftentimes found in, in lymph nodes. It's the most common kind of non-Hodgkin lymphoma in the world, and it's an aggressive kind of lymphoma. Now, VLBCL was sort of established or coined as a term, you know, decades ago now, based off of what doctors saw underneath the microscope. They saw a disease that involved a lot of large looking immune cells um, in, in sheets or, or clusters. And over the last two decades, we've learned a lot more about this disease. Um, it's actually sort of now a bucket term that represents um, you know, different kinds of, of uh, aggressive lymphomas that are treated similarly, however, can behave quite differently uh, patient to, to patient as we learn more about the genetics and biology behind each of their cancers. DLBCL, um, I uh, have come to, to understand, can actually present with any kind of uh, symptom. You know, this can range, you know, rarely from no symptoms at all, all the way to a patient, you know, showing up to the emergency room and being admitted to the intensive care unit. Um, generally, not surprised uh, regarding any kinds of presentations. But there are some common uh, symptoms. Um, lymphoma in general can cause what we call B symptoms, which uh, can be unintended weight loss, extreme fatigue, fevers, or, or drenching night sweats, you know, waking up in the middle of the night completely soaked. And, and this has to do with the lymphoma, the underlying cancer causing inflammation in the body. As the lymphoma grows and replaces the lymph nodes with more tumorous cells, that can lead to growth of lymph nodes as well as involvement in different, uh, different organs in the body, which can cause pain as well as you know, abnormalities with, with organ function. And because DLBCL is an aggressive cancer, it's, you know, even before treatment, can turn over quickly as some cells die and, and more cells grow. And that can spill its contents into the blood, which can cause problems called tumor lysis and affect the kidneys or, or the heart um, as well. So unfortunately, patients can you know, be found to be quite sick at, at time of diagnosis. Generally, symptoms can be present for, for, for weeks to, to months, not usually on the course of, of years because this is an aggressive and, and fast-moving disease. DLBCL is diagnosed with a, a tissue biopsy. Um, we have to get a sample of the tissue for the pathology doctor to look at underneath the microscope as well as uh, run additional uh, tests. There are dozens, if not more than a hundred different kinds of lymphoma, and so it's very important to get as good of a sample as possible for the pathologist. Ideally, this is with what's called an excisional uh, biopsy, usually done by a surgeon, where they take out um, you know, the, the entire lymph node to, to look at underneath the microscope. Because the diagnosis of lymphomas uh, is quite oftentimes um, dependent on what those tumorous cells look like in the architecture of the lymph node it, itself. If a surgical biopsy is not possible or available, the next best option is with what's called a core needle biopsy, oftentimes performed by an interventional radiologist. Um, where they insert a, a small needle multiple times um, into the uh, involved site of the disease. So sometimes, usually this is sufficient for diagnosis, but sometimes we might need to do a repeat biopsy. DLBCL we've been treating very similarly for the last two to three decades now. In the early to mid 1990s, um, the chemotherapy regimen um, with the acronym CHOP 
uh, became sort of the preferred uh, treatment option. This included for uh, different drugs. And in the early 2000s, we introduced um, a drug called rituximab, which is immune therapy to the CHOP regimen. This sort of established the RCHOP uh, treatment paradigm, which we've been um, using uh, for the last two decades or so to treat newly diagnosed uh, DLBCL. This is an uh, immunochemotherapy regimen that's delivered um, over six cycles, um, about every 21 days or so. And for all comers, we're generally curing about you know, two-thirds of patients with, with uh, RCHOP. Now, the field has you know, not been sitting on the laurels over the last uh, two decades. We've been trying to improve on the RCHOP regimen. And only until recently did we finally have a clinical trial that showed potentially some improvement over the historic regimen where we replaced the O uh, drug of RCHOP, Oncovin or Vincristine, with a novel drug called Polituzumab, Vidotin, what we call the Pola R chip or R Pola chip regimen. And so this regimen is now approved by the FDA for patients with intermediate or high risk DLBCL, and it's also given over six cycles. There are some other caveats, you know, for some very high risk uh, or patients with very high risk disease, we give an escalated regimen called our EPOC, which is delivered sort of continuously over four and a half to five days, oftentimes in the hospital each time, and it adds additional chemotherapy etoposide to the RCHOP regimen. And for some patients that uh, may not uh, be a candidate for full dose chemotherapy, we can give a regimen called our mini chop, which has reduced doses of chemotherapy. But in general, the paradigm is very similar. We sort of give multiple chemotherapies with immune therapy over about six cycles of treatment. And the goal of treatment is to cure. For DLBCL that does not respond to first treatment or comes back or relapses after first treatment, historically, uh, before the year 2017, we treat these patients um, with uh, additional chemotherapy followed by high dose chemo and a stem cell transplant rescue to protect them from the lingering side effects of that high dose chemotherapy. Um, this was a curative treatment option, but unfortunately, this only ended up sort of being a, a treatment paradigm that uh, a minority of patients could, could tolerate or see success with. This all changed after 2017 with the approval of the first chimeric antigen receptor T-cell treatment, or, or CAR T-cell. This is a non-chemotherapy-based treatment where a patient's own immune cells, their own T cells, which are an important part of uh, fighting cancer, um, these immune cells are, are, are taken out in a procedure similar to donating platelets, and then they're genetically engineered to um, be able to recognize and, and kill the patient's own lymphoma. Um, this product is prepared over several weeks and sort of administered back to the patient. Now in the year 2024, for patients who have high-risk relapsed DLBCL, so this, uh, these are patients who have their disease come back quickly or don't respond at all to initial chemotherapy, they are eligible to receive uh, our CAR T-cell product um, for their first relapse. And so um, this kind of treatment has been revolutionary for, for patients and is still curative for a large minority, you know, maybe a little bit less than half of patients in this setting. There are a number of different novel treatments besides CAR-T that have been approved over the last, you know, three to five years for relapse and refractory DLBCL. The newest kid on the block is a kind of treatment called bispecific antibodies. 
So these are drugs that attach to both the um, cancer cells themselves as well as a patient's own immune cells that are already in the body. And it helps bring the immune system to the lymphoma itself and activate the patient's own immune system. So these drugs work in a way similarly to CAR T cells, however they don't require um, the manufacturing of a, a patient's own cell therapy product, they're sort of ready off the bat. However, they have to be administered over multiple doses instead of a, a one-time uh, treatment like CAR T. And so this kind of treatment is a little bit simpler to, to administer, um, uh, oftentimes a little bit safer to, to give in the community rather than CAR T cells, which require specialized centers to, um, to treat. Beyond biospecifics, we're also very interested in um, you know, moving the needle forward with clinical trials. Can we combine different agents like novel drugs with bispecific antibodies to improve outcomes? And can we use new technology to personalize the, the care of, of patients with newly diagnosed BLBCL? Right now, the treatment um, approach is still generally a one-size-fits-all approach. You know, everybody we try to give are generally six cycles of chemotherapy. But can we use new technology like um, blood tests, looking at circulating tumor DNA to identify which patients have responded quite well in the middle of treatment and might be able to stop their chemotherapy early to reduce side effects? or which patients may be unfortunately destined to, to relapse and might require additional or more aggressive treatments to get them to that goal of cure.